Living in a tiny space in the winter where it is cold and it is humid can be an absolutely miserable experience because of the condensation on your windows and the condensation along the lower parts of your floor in enclosed cabinets. It is a horrible fight against mold. Here's my solution. So this is the little machine that changed my life living in this small space during the cold winter. This is an Ivation desiccant dehumidifier. So just like those canisters you can get or those bags that you hang uh, to take moisture out of the air, same principle except this has a wheel spinning inside of it with desiccant and it blows warm air over it constantly having the desiccant release its moisture. So it's just constantly renewing itself is what it's doing. And you can set the humidity from 35 to 85 with this button right here so like at night when it's cold i set it at 35 and it'll bring it down to 35 and then once it gets up to 40 it starts again or you can just run it continuously so during the day i do that because this little machine will pretty much heat my little tiny house as long as it's not below 40 degrees outside and there's a canister on the side of it right here that you just pull out and empty and i have to do that twice a day so let me put a thermometer in it and I'll show you how warm the air is that comes out of it. I just moved this manually to direct the air, but you can also put it on swing and it'll swing back and forth. So it looks like our temperature gets up to right at about 107 degrees, which is pretty darn warm for the winter heat in your little tiny house. So the areas that I used to really struggle with in the winter with the humidity and condensation were the windows. They would get all wet and they would literally like rain inside of my house and I would have water down in the sills right here every morning and I would have to dry that all out and I'd have to wipe down all my windows. And also underneath this huge cabinet in the kitchen, I had tremendous issues because along that edge of the wall down at the bottom, it would get so cold, the actual wall would start to condensate. And I'll show you under here. So along that edge down there, like quarter inch up, it's a metal beam that this wood attaches to and it would get so cold that I would get water condensating in here and then it would grow mold. And I was constantly having to clean up mold and fight with the condensation underneath this cabinet. Since I got that little desiccant dehumidifier, I have had no condensation issues on my windows. You can see it is cold today. It is raining outside and my windows are dry as a bone. Where I live, what we struggle with is high humidity. You can see right here, it's 96% humidity during the day today, and it'll be 99% humidity during the night, and it'll be cold. That is a big problem in a tiny house, because it will cause you all kinds of condensation issues. Not to mention cooking in here and just breathing at night. Like, I looked online, I think you like exhale up to a half a pint of water just out of your own self during the evening. So before I got that desiccant dehumidifier, I did try a regular compressor dehumidifier, but because it's cold where I live in the winter, it would freeze up and it would just become ineffective. So I got rid of that sucker right away. And before I got that, I had a little dehumidifier that was a thermoelectric one that allegedly dehumidifies up to 225 square feet. And I only live in like 72 but it did absolutely nothing. So it was just a constant battle with humidity and mold and constantly having to clean that up and fight against that. No more. So you can see it's 96% humidity outside, I just showed you. But right now in my house, it's 40% humidity. So not only does this show where you set it, but after you set it, it then monitors what the humidity level is in the house and shows you and it's 65. So the only thing I have running right now is that dehumidifier and with that 107 degree air, that is what is keeping my house at 65 degrees right now. So now before you say it, let's talk about insulation and do I ventilate the house all the time? The ventilation is running all the time. I have a max air fan right there. You can see it's on and that sucks air out of the house 
And another vent back here. That's open because I have cover so they can run in the rain or the snow. So I'm constantly ventilating the house. That wasn't the issue. And I have R-Max uh, rigid insulation in this trailer, which is very expensive. The most expensive you can buy. I have one inch in the walls because that's how thick my walls are and two inches in the ceiling and two inches in the floor. So it's just about if you live where it's cold and it's humid in the winter, you are going to have condensation issues. Now this little machine, it only takes 250 watts if you run it on low, or if you run it on high, it's 425 watts. And what is that hunk of meat on my stove, you might ask? Well, let me tell you, those are pork country ribs that I'm going to cook up in the Instapot. And then when they are done, I'm going to use this delicious miso Japanese barbecue sauce, and I'm going to blowtorch them with a nice caramelized finish. <laughs> so along with the desiccant dehumidifier that pretty much warms my house during the winter because it blows out 170 degree air, I also have this really small... Uh, ceramic heater and I've never used it on anything but low which is 750 watts and I think on high it's 1500 watts but using that along with this desiccant dehumidifier I'm able to keep my house any temperature I want even when it gets as low as 20 degrees here where I live all right let's create some more humidity in this house and see how the little dehumidifier works because we're gonna use the instapot we're gonna boil up some asparagus and we're gonna make some air fryer potatoes I was gonna use miso barbecue sauce for the ribs, but I changed my mind. I'm gonna use Sweet Baby Ray's sweet and spicy barbecue sauce, and I'm gonna add a little mustard to it to finish these. And I'm gonna season them up before I put them in the Instapot with some water and some apple cider vinegar with Memphis char seasoning, one of my favorites. I prefer my asparagus actually like room temperature or cold so I cook them first and then put them aside and if you keep them wrapped in a moist paper towel they are fresh as the day you got them I got these a week ago and they are still crisp and delicious and the asparagus are done I blanched them for a minute and 20 seconds and that was plenty for me keep them nice and crisp time to get those pork ribs in the instapot so let's get those suckers in there yeah. I don't like to touch raw meat. I say it all the time. So I like plastic gloves. All right, those were all seasoned up with that Memphis char deliciousness. And actually, before I get this done, I'm gonna put the water in and the apple cider vinegar so I don't have to pour it over them. And then some apple cider vinegar just adds another dimension of delicious flavor. Oh lord, I should have done this before I started. Mm. Perfect. All right, we're gonna cook these for 26 minutes because I want them real tender. And that's why you can't put them on the barbecue and caramelize them with barbecue sauce afterwards because they'll just fall right through the barbecue grate. <laughs> and now we'll get some potatoes ready for the air fryer. So once those ribs are done, we'll disconnect that. And while they're naturally releasing their pressure, we will cook up these potatoes in the air fryer. Paper towel, so it's easy to pull these peels out. And look at that, I just bought these potatoes and they're already sprouting. So we got those little potatoes peeled quickly. Paper towel just makes it simple to clean out the sink, so I don't have to dig them all out because potato peels stick to the damn sink. I will right, get these little guys chopped up. I'm just gonna make them real thin. Not thin, just little. So our timer has gone off for those ribs in the Instapot. Time to get the potatoes in the in Insta in the air fryer. <laughs> so toss them potatoes in there. A little bit of grapeseed oil. Oh, that was a little more than a little. Whoops. some of the seasoning. 
roasted garlic and herb. Give them a little stuff at the top. In the air fryer they go. Okay, why well, I wouldn't recommend that you do this in your home. I do have the fire extinguisher right here. I am gonna blowtorch my ribs, which have come out of the Instapot, and I'm gonna caramelize them. So we'll show you how that works. This is Sweet Baby Ray's Sweet and Spicy with some mustard added. We're gonna get some barbecue sauce on these little guys. And we are gonna start caramelizing them. I'm gonna turn the fan up just a little bit. And we're off. How about that? So we just want to give them some caramelization. It's pretty quick. Now the other side. Holy cow, a little piece fell off. We better eat it. Mm. Mm. That is really good. And we're off again. So the main reason I changed from using the miso Japanese barbecue sauce tonight was because I wanted, I was going to use rice, but instead I wanted to use potatoes because I want to try this habanero ketchup that my friend gave me. But first we got to make a quick lemon infused pepper mayo for the asparagus. So I like to just take my room temperature cold asparagus, preferably cold, I've had mine in the fridge and eat them like french fries and I just dip them in my sauce if the sauce would come out so some mayo some lemon juice and some pepper Delicious ribs. See, they just fall apart. They're so good. Mwah. Our asparagus. Nice and chilled from the refrigerator. And our delicious air fried potatoes. And there it is. Pork ribs out of the Instapot that are blowtorched with a caramelized barbecue sauce, uh, air fried potatoes with habanero ketchup, and asparagus with a lemon infused pepper mayo. Mwah! Bon appetit! Oh lord. A little bit of rib on the wall. Mm. 